Once upon a time in Seoul, South Korea, the universal enemy Shin kang hoo started a senseless massacre that made everyone suffer. Guild leader Chang Sha Wan and basically the entire nation believed that Shin sung hoo was the true embodiment of evil and he was the one to blame for everything. Chang shi Wen fought for justice and for all the people of the world, and Shin kang hoo kept getting in his way, but who is he after that if not the devil himself? As long as Chang Sha Huan's name comes from the mouths of the people, he will never, ever lose. The people never doubted and always trusted their savior, the guild leader Chang Shiwen. Shin Kang Hu hated all the people and wished for their deaths, including the guild leader Chang Shiwen. Guild head Chang Shiwen ordered Shin Tsang Hu to accept his death and finish the guy off in front of the people. The guild leader Chang Shiwen ordered the people to see the fruits of their common endeavors, now thanks to them, the earth would know absolute freedom. No sooner had guild head Chang Sha Wan still made his victory speech than the moment came when the demon king condescended to the ground. All the people in the square scattered in all directions from the fear of what they had seen with their own eyes. According to guild head Chang Shiwen, true peace was already near, but Shin Tsang Hu believed that this was true tyranny. Guild head Chang Shiwen didn't understand how Shin Tsang Hu was still alive, he asked the guy to open his eyes wide and behold the insignificant insect. Guild head Chang Shiwen's new world of justice was close but in the blink of an eye, that world disappeared. All the while, people kept the savior alive, who eventually became an unbelievable villain. The protagonist Chang Shiwen served the demon king, he and his fellow 13 luminaries turned out to be an ancient high-level evil. However, fiction is only a reflection of reality, the guy wrote this novella, a motif of his own student life. It was then that the guy met a man with the kind of power that could shut people out of school violence and the true nature of the world that power went beyond good and evil. The guy decided to denounce reality in the novella, only he racked up a bunch of negative comments about leaving the ending open-ended. Things had gone completely wrong already there was no way to rewrite anything, so the guy decided to just go to bed. After dozing off, the guy felt a terrible noise and barely opening his eyes the guy saw the stone floor. It was a dream a guy in his dream saw some commander beating his soldier, calling him all sorts of dirty words. The guy decided to say something in defense of the guy the commander was beating, but the commander switched to him. The guy didn't understand how he could feel pain if he was in a dream, he wondered if it was a dream because everything was too realistic. The guy noticed that he had developed the ability to absorb mana at will, and most likely it was definitely an innate hypersensitivity to mana. Well now it turns out the guy is not just Kanhu, but Shin Kanhu, of all people he was the one who got this opportunity. Shin Kanhu realized that if this guy was still alive, it meant that there were about five years left before the world was destroyed. If Shin Kanhu was in Chang Shiwen's body, he would at least be honored as a hero. But as it is, it will end with the Demon King's procession, and only his followers will survive. If Shin Kanhu didn't change the course of events, he himself would die a miserable death, although there was some good news. Shin Kanhu was confident that he knew how to escape from his current location. When you're in someone else's body all the previous owner's experience feels like your own, even though the guy was only level 10. Shin Kanhu's stamina was nothing, and why did the guy come up with this innate hypersensitivity to mana? Guy suggested that Shin Kanhu ask the commander for a break, but if those people cared about their condition, they would let them rest. At the Eclipse Correctional Center, novice hunters are condemned to the Arabian labor of mining mana stones. Shin Kanhu asked the guy not to think about him and continue mining the stones before anyone got smacked on the top of the head from the guards. Shin Kanhu was calm as he warned the guy but that was the end of his powers. This character was a prototype of a real person, and it wasn't yet time to change the plot of the novella, or the guy wouldn't be able to escape. While the guards kept an eye on the newcomers that guy still tried to escape, but the commander grabbed him and showed the others the responsibility they had for their antics. Shin Kanhu was incredibly angry at the guy since he had told him not to do anything stupid. Seeing that Shin Kanhu had approached the guy, the commander decided to ask why he didn't stand up for him like last time, because now the commander had no one to stop him, so he would have killed Shin Kanhu as well. Shin Kanhu explained to the commander that he didn't care about the guy's death, he had more important things to worry about. The commander escorted Shin Kanhu to the restroom at his request and explained that he only had a minute and if he delayed even a second in the stall this stall would be his grave. Entering the stall, Shin Kanhu drew the main constellation with his blood and made a pact to raise his strength. The commander, unable to endure such a long wait, decided to enter the stall, where he was destroyed by Shin Kang Hoon. Now, thanks to the not-so-smart commander Shin Kan, he didn't have to think long and hard about when to leave that place. The first step to escape had been taken, the uniform of a second-rank warden would help blend the guy in with his surroundings. The second step was an arson, and the third step was the escape itself through the main gate and no other way. 
Noticing that a fire had broken out in the front of Building 18, the warden called the fire department and decided to proceed as instructed. The commander ordered us to get in the car and drive quickly to the crematorium as fast as we could. The commanders had information that someone had escaped from the 18th building, Shin Kanhu, who was in the car at the time, said that the escapee had climbed over the wall on the northwest side. One of the drivers commented that the warden must be tired, because everything going on must be a headache. Shin Kanghu, in order to deflect suspicion from himself, said that it would be easier to just kill the prisoners stupidly, since they wouldn't listen anyway. The driver agreed with Shin Kanhu's words, for in word, they are hunters, but in fact they are losers. The second driver wondered how long ago the warden had been in charge of building 18. The guy replied that he was literally the day before yesterday, a sign then the second driver assumed that the guy was from the 9th unit and not the existing 9th unit was also formed only the day before yesterday stated the driver, and after saying that the main goal of the 9th unit was to eliminate underdogs like them, Shin Kanhu tried to eliminate the drivers. Shin Kanhu was exhausted because he had spent too much mana suddenly the guy noticed that a patrol was approaching them, and this was clearly not in his plans. Impressive guy manages to put down two wardens and escapes suddenly claimed by some stranger. Shin Kanhu noticed that the stranger had a red mark above his head, which meant that he had made a pact with the constellation and now the guy was wondering what his power was. A little later, Shin Kanhu had learned that that guy could find anyone through mana trails and that was how he found him. The ability to see with which constellation the treaty was made and the red mark as a mark of identification was given to the guy for a reason. It's time to see the third trait of the Shin Kanku constellation in action, thought the guy except that it's at least level 100. Shinkan was not allowed to engage in close combat with the stranger so he decided to trap him and attack him from the back. The stranger thought that Shin Kanhu was trying to hide from him, which was an impossibility. The stranger, thinking he had found Shin Kanhu, moved towards the place throwing out his weapon. Shin Kanhu was surprised that the melee fighter had thrown away his weapon and destroyed it. Shin Kanhu has killed his target, now the pact with the skillful tracker comes into his possession. The artful seeker is under the control of a legendary thief, the constellation can only be freed if he is exterminated or the treaty is terminated. Using all the skills skillfully sell Shin Kanhu made sure that there was no one else around. To prevent the stranger from tracking down where Shin Kanhu was, he decided to suppress his mana hypersensitivity and placed it all into the stone. If Shin Kanhu started to rapidly absorb all the mana around him, the search would instantly end, the mana stone had to be quickly thrown far away. Shin Kanhu managed to trick the stranger into destroying him, but he had to use a short jump to get close to him. Such a load was too much for the guy. Shin Kanhu realizing that just a little more and he would be gone decided that he needed to find a safe place. Seeing a truck with sand for cleaning mana stones, the guy jumped on it without thinking. Shin Kanhu put down three guards while running away. There was no such thing in the novella, so we had to try not to change the future until the guy was strong enough. Good thing the guy had enough information and his role in that world wasn't that important, so the guy thought his actions wouldn't affect anything. The wardens informed the chief that an escape had been made, to which he replied that it was not so important, for they could find more men to mine the stones. The head realized that the kid was smart, because he caught everyone by surprise and escaped right through the main gate. The chief was amazed that a level 10 assassin they could not even find could not put a level 45 and 55 assassin, still with a constellation. Upon reaching the city, Kanhu Oppa went into a telephone booth and after dialing someone he reported that he was in front of Dejan Station. The boy thanked Han Soen, for he had fallen like a snowball, and there was still bandaging him. The girl inquired what had happened to him, and the guy explained that he had been kidnapped by an eclipse. Han Soen wasn't surprised that the guy was taken to the mana stone mine, since they often kidnapped hunters, after all, you need mana to mine stones. Low-level hunters such as the boy were easily victimized by the stronger ones. Despite that, the guy still decided to trust Han Soen and contacted her, after all, she was still in love with Shin kang -ho. The girl blamed herself, because if they had contacted more often, Shin Kang would not have had to go through all of this alone. When the guys parted ways, the girl was a rookie, a recently awakened hunter, and now a veteran of the great level who had made a pact with the constellation. If the girl had been around the guy that time, she would have been dragged to the Chonmen Correctional Center too. Shin Kanhu explained to the girl that she had helped enough and it was better for her not to get involved in his problems, or else she too might become Eclipse's target despite her great level. Shin Kanhu explained to the girl that she didn't need to worry about him she should save her power for herself. Han Soen gave the guy enough money and a black market phone to make him hard to trace. Could it be that the girl's guild is doing some kind of evil deeds? It seems that both then and now, the girl in this guild is really in her place. 
the girl suggested that the guy join their guild, because if he joined there, they could be together like before. Shin Kang Hu explained to Han Soen that she shouldn't dwell on their past. The girl didn't expect anything else, but regarding the guy's request, she took care of everything. One of her friends was the head, and all the details were on the phone. Han Soen told the boy good luck and asked him to take care of himself. He thanked her and slammed the door behind him. After leaving the house, the guy got into a cab and heard on the news that the Zhonghua Guild had exterminated the White Rose Mercenary Corps. It's judgment day for the rapidly growing criminal organization White Rose, which has its base in Jiangshan, Gangwanado Province. A journalist who was reporting from the rooftop of a building in Gangnam District, Seoul, described how the sky was covered with lilac clouds. According to their data, in that area, unknown dungeon monsters with an unnatural sky in the midst of all the chaos those who had the strength to fight back were called hunters. All this confusion led people to believe that the time of divine judgment had come. The hunters, who at first exterminated only monsters, then turned to humans, first supposedly in the name of God, and then for no reason at all. But when the world seemed to have come to an end, the world was saved by Chang Shiwen. Jiang Shiwen founded an organization in Seoul that helped and protected and healed people, and that's how the Zhonghua Guild came into being. That's why all the people were running away to super safe Seoul. Shin Kung Hu thought, Hunter Jiang Shiwen had long tracked down the White Rose Corps, which had organized the terrorist attacks at the 11th entrance of Gangnam Station in Seoul. But the White Rose are not terrorists, the terrorist attack is certainly not their doing, it's all one actor theater by Jiang Shiwen. If the guy tries to tell people that he's the one at the center of all the disasters, Chang Shiwen will turn him into a villain in the public eye. That was why the guy had asked for a personal visit to the mercenary corps, since all the guilds were within his reach. When he reached his destination, he was met by Li Yerin. After getting acquainted, the girl gave him a list of suitable jobs. Seeing the list, the guy refused everything, because he was only interested in a high-paying field of activity. Knowing that the guy was only at level 10, the girl laughed as she looked into his eyes. After all, would the guy really make her carry his corpse later? Li Yirin was a mage and amplifier who had made a pact with an above-average level constellation, and a character who would one day have to confront the 13 luminaries. Shin Kan Hu realized that he needed to gain Li Yirin's trust, and asked her if skills were the first thing to be valued after all, level was a tenth thing. Li Yirin explained to the boy that one can't go far on the strength of one's spirit, and prejudice won't help at all. In the end, Li Yirin still agreed, but first she wanted to see what the guy could do. Li Yirin's evaluation criterion was one tactic just needed to avoid her attack. Li Yirin wanted to see if the guy could at least defend his body. After all, if he could dodge, then he would be able to attack. The girls decided to create puppets out of fog, with which she can track anyone, even from a great distance. The guy realized that the ability, not attacking so even if hit, he would live. However, the mark it would leave would mean defeat. After the first attack, the girl saw the impossible, because with the guy's level, even a meter jump would be difficult, and he was able to dodge. Realizing that the guy wasn't bluffing, the girl decided to see how the guy would dodge the second blow. After realizing that Shin Kanhu had dodged the second strike with teleportation, the guys decided to finish it off. Li Yirin decided to ask Shin Tsung Hu if he had been trained before, because the tenth level definitely didn't move like this in her opinion. Li Yirin announced that the guy had passed the test now she was confident that the 50th level errands the guy could handle. The girl gave the guy his first assignment. Shin Kang Hu needed to track down the criminal who had almost shot Li Yirin just recently. Shin Kang Hu was to travel to Kenjido province, Ozen city, in an open dungeon abandoned ruin he was to find a level 50 mage, a rank 3 item, boots of Vartaros. The girl explained to the guy that it wasn't necessary to deliver him alive. After all, he had finished off too many civilians. If he destroyed him, Nabo would be grateful. Shin Kan Hu accepted the assignment and immediately set out to make it a reality. Shin Kan Hu requested a license to enter a dungeon with medium and high level bosses as a reward. In the dungeon, Shin Kan Hu met Ventus, who smugly promised to destroy the guy. Ventus tried to convince his victim that he was attacking from one side and at full strength but in fact the real danger is elsewhere. Shin Kanhu noticed that the average level was only lip service, but in reality, the melee skill was raw. Due to his skills, it was not difficult for Shin Kanhu to destroy Ventus, who was at a medium level. Cho in J, Ozen's third-ranked defender, didn't expect the guy to run into Ventus the moment he weakened and destroyed him at all. One of Cho in J's subordinates stated that she had seen the guy at the market, and it looked like he was going to hunt monsters in the dungeon to collect loot from them. The guys realized that by the looks of it, this assassin was far from a weakling, 
but none of them had seen this guy before. The level of the dungeon was not at all comparable to his strength. Cho in Jay didn't understand at all what the guy was forgetting there. It was in the guy's best interest not to disturb Shin Kanhu, so they decided to just obfuscate him when he was done. By investing all the points in endurance, Shin Kanhu keeps his innate mana hypersensitivity under control, so there's no point in investing in mana. After taking a bite of Salakium, the guy perked up a bit, because Salakium has calming and anesthetic effects and helps suppress hypersensitivity to mana. It's hard to pick it up in a normal dungeon and come across it, and it grows in natural conditions, and mass production is difficult to establish. But there was one person in the country who knew how to grow Salatium, and he's in the middle of the chaos. That place was called the DMZ. It's a long way away, and you should be well prepared before you go there, the boy thought. If the guy's hypersensitivity took over during the fight with Ventus, he would definitely destroy the guy in a matter of seconds. Since last year, mobile communication has been getting worse and worse. Someone is deliberately causing interference. Chang Shiwen had Eclipse or Black Lion on his tail, and it probably won't get any better. Li Yirin had long since gotten used to constantly looking around, and it was as if she had grown an extra pair of eyes on the back of her head. Chang Shiwen asked Li Yirin if she could recommend some hunter to him. But Li Yirin wasn't confident that she could meet Mr. Chang Sha Wan's requirements in choosing hunters. Li Yirin asked Chang Sha Huan if he had any useful information for her. Li Yirin explained that the news of some crime syndicate had reached him by chance, and he would send the data via secure mail a little later. Li Yirin thanked Chang Sha Wan, to which the latter replied that no words of thanks were necessary. After all, when it comes to this kind of information, he is willing to help at any time. The Chonghua Guild was in desperate need of new talents, and Chang Shiwen hoped that they would be sent a worthy hunter and he would reward them wholeheartedly. Later on, Li Yirin realized that no matter how high her expectations were, how could she even suggest the candidacy of someone who had just recently accepted his first assignment? Meanwhile, mid-level boss Ibria was also getting what he deserved from Shin Kanhu. The weakness of the steel skill was that the movement of such a behemoth was easy to predict, and it was a sin not to take advantage of that, the guy thought. Using his teleportation skills and illusion magic, Shin Kanhu defeated the mid-level boss and thus increased his level. Shin Kanhu had obtained a new level of steel. The skill of this level is to attract a target within a certain distance in front of the person. Shin Kanhu realized that this skill worked with objects, and if you put your mind to it, you could also speed up your movements with this skill. The Black Lion organization conditionally approved Kim Moon Heng's entry into their ranks with one condition, that he would pass on the secret information about Blue Eyes to the mercenary corps under the command of Li Yeren. Kim Mukyun was happy to read this news, because Li Yeren had been up all night trying to catch him. In general, Kim Mukyun would prefer Eclipse, but Black Lion will also do, because finally he will be able to go to the dungeon, where he has not been for a long time. Suddenly, Shin Kang Ho, whom he regarded as his new victim, appeared in front of Kim Mukyun. Kim Mukyun sent his animals to the guy to eat his lunch but the guy was smarter than that. He took out a piece of meat and gave it to the animals, and then destroyed it. Only Shin Kanhu understood that the beasts had pounced on this piece of meat for a reason. After all, he had specially prepared the meat so that the taste would make them go crazy. Shin Kanhu made it clear that Kim Mukyun should take this as a warning and asked him to hand over the stolen goods if he valued his life. Kim Mukyun didn't want to give anything away, because he realized that the kid was not badly trained, and seemed to be a bit dumb. Shin Kanhu, using his mana trace skill noticed that Kim Mukchen had mined everything well, but using his short jump, the guy still managed to leap through the mines. Kim Mukchen swore that Shin Sanghu would soon know the full power of the black magic of hell. Shin Kanhu realized that a dark mage with a constellation capable of disorientation was at the 50th level. Kim Mukchen saw through Shin Kanhu and was sure that he definitely wouldn't be able to dodge this time. Shin Kang who knew what he was planning to do, Kim Mukchen, and just in time to pull out his sword, the guy leaned it against his forehead. It was the only option to defend against the opponent's ability. Kim Mukchen didn't understand at all how the guy knew about her. Despite Kim Mukyun's many manipulations, Shin Kang still managed to catch him and wound him. Shin Khan who received another award of the Constellation Master of Maneuver Warfare, which praises strategic planning of attacks. Shin Kang who didn't think that he would have a sponsor. An inconceivable number of constellations are constantly watching the hunters, but sponsors are rare among them, because sponsorship consumes a constellation's own power. They definitely won't regret choosing Shin Kanhu, as it's in return that he'll take over every ability they have. Shin Kanhu finishes his goal after all, and the Chaos Warrior Pact is taken over by a guy. The House Warrior is under the control of a legendary thief. 
the constellation can only be released by exterminating him or terminating the contract. Shin Kang Hu can now use all the skills of the Chaos Warrior. Shin Kang Hu thought that he should take all of Kim Mukun's stuff, since it looks like he let all of his money go to stuff. Shin Kang Hu planned to tie the mana thread on his gloves to his dagger, because that way he would be comfortable throwing the vest would come in handy in the process with his stamina, and the ring would add strength. Lastly, Shin Kang Hu decided to pick up the enemy god talisman, which consumed one unit of mana every second after activating the awakening state. All of Kim Mukchen's things were now in the possession of Shin Tsang Hu, who then planned to sell all of the ninth rank's things. Shin Kang Hu moved on for the assassin's inherent skills, but he found it strange that all the monsters suddenly disappeared. Zhong Enji and his team, seeing the condition the guy is in, decide it's time to grab him and take all his stuff. For starters, the guys decided to let the clawed rabbits out to exhaust the guy properly. Shin Kang Hu easily dealt with the clawed rabbits and reached the 20th level. Now the guy has access to the basic assassin class skill speed stabbing. Bloody stabbing continuously inflicts the bleed status on the target. Jong In Jae took advantage of the guy letting his guard down and decided to attack him from behind. Shin Kang Hu, sensing that there was someone behind him dodged, the guy realized that someone was trying to rob him. Cho In Jae had a trait that the more he fought, the stronger he became. But it seemed that Cho In Jae wasn't that strong, as he was weakened in an instant by some miserable cuts. Knowing that berserkers were also human and excessive loss of red matter was fatal to them, Shin Tsang Hu plunged his dagger straight into Cho In Jae's heart. After destroying another one of his targets, the Blood Glutton's Pact is taken over by Shin Kan Hu. Shin Tsang Hu noticed that Cho In Jae had gathered quite a solid arsenal for himself. A beautiful bracelet with magic resistance, shoes that increased his movement speed, and a gauntlet that increased his stamina. The guy planned to put Cho In Jae's glove on one hand and a throwing glove on the other, and everything would be awesome. After taking everything he needed and didn't need, Shin Kan Ho decided it was time for him to finalize the order. After reaching the office, Shin Kan Ho immediately handed the boots into Li Yerin's hands. She didn't expect him to find Vataro's shoes so quickly. Li Yerin admitted honestly that their first order serves as a kind of test, about half of the candidates fall off already on it. But it is her cold and calculating mind that gives her such an impressive completion rate on high importance orders. As Li Yerin promised, she would give the guy access to a dungeon with a bunch of intermediate bosses and information about it. Wuthering Heights, Caffin Station it has for intermediate bosses and one main boss. Shin Kan Hu realizing that he could get as many as five skills there, the guy asked for access for tomorrow morning. Shin Kan Hu offered to buy a few items for the girl, she agreed to buy everything at a good price. Shin Kan Hu's next order of business was an order from the National Security Agency. Shin Kan Hu must find a man named Ho Chong Tai who committed theft of government property causing bodily harm. The reward for finding this character is 300 million won and one month of dungeon admission at level 100 or lower. Li Yerin explained to the boy that it would not be easy to find this character, but the children had only seen him once at Yang Peng Station, and no one else had any leads. Selling all the unnecessary things, the guy became 250 million won richer, so now it's a sin not to take care of his health. Dialing the delivery number, the guy asked them to bring 10 salakiums to Yensan Station. Shin Kan Hu still had some time before going to the dungeon, so he decided that it would be worth it to have a drink and find out something useful. Walking into the bar, the guy ordered himself a single glass of Salakium Splash, the bartender Benny was a little shocked. Benny never thought anyone would order it because it has a very unusual flavor. Sometimes in clubs like this, the staff has useful information, Shin Kan Hu thought, except that the information is certainly not backed up by anything. Turning back around, Shin Kan Hu saw Kang Dong Hu subordinate Kang Dong Hun subordinate Eclipse leadership member hunting dog CHA Sohi. Did Eclipse have Shin Kan Hu under surveillance after all? The boy wondered. Benny admitted that it was the first time she'd seen such a handsome man and it was unlikely they'd have another chance to cross paths in the future. Shin Kang was curious as to why Benny thought that, she explained that it could be all just rumors of course, but apparently Eclipse wants to take over the club. Most likely, the Eclipse people want to capture all the hunters and send them to work in the mines. So that was the reason CHA so he was in that club, Shin Kang who thought. The guy didn't want to linger in the club, and deciding to leave, the Eclipse men suddenly burst into the club and explained that they had some valuable merchandise in the club. Shin Kan who stood still doing nothing, but one of the Eclipse members decided to get to the guy. Barely taking a swing at Shin Kan he, the Eclipse staff member immediately got what he deserved. Seeing that one of Eclipse's employees wants to pounce on the guy, CHA so he decided to stand up for Shin Kan Hu. 
CHA so he saw Shin Kanhu for the first time, but she seemed to like him immediately, so she decided to ask the guy what guild he was from. Shin Kanhu explained to CHA so he that guilds weren't his, the girl without thinking for a long time offered to immediately talk business naturally after getting out of all that crowd. The Eclipse guys didn't understand at all what was going on, did their plan change and their investigator attack them. Shin Kang who was sure this was all part of her plan CHA so he wanted to see the guy's abilities in action, but so be it the guy didn't mind playing along. Realizing that the guy was running away, CHA so he ordered to catch up with the guy while everyone else cleared the hall. Meanwhile, the club has informed its attendees that members of the Black Lion faction are seeking to wreak havoc in the club, and Eclipse is already working to quell the disorder. While Shin Kan who was running away from Eclipse, he managed to get another constellation Apostle of Justice was moved by the guy's zeal to punish the blues of hypocrisy and evil. Having dealt with three villains constellation Apostle of Justice, as expected the guy's instincts did not fail. Breaking away from Eclipse as all guilds tangibly tied CHO so his hand suggested that Shin Kang who join where there was no such control. Shin Kang who promised CHO so he to contact them as soon as he finished his business. CHA so he instantly informed her master that they were completely sorted out, it certainly didn't go as smoothly as they would have liked, but there was more good than bad. CHA so he promised to get all the information she needed, all she needed was that guy's name. Judging from CHO Soha's reaction, from the looks of it, the hunt for Shin Kang her hadn't been opened yet. But just in case, Shin Kang who should have gotten out of Dijin, Shin Kang who was getting a little frayed nerves that the eclipse's influence was spreading, and since they had recently started monitoring the movement of all the trains holding course for Kapiong, instead of going there and to his dungeons, it would be directly safer to take a detour through Yensan Station, Shin Kan who thought. Suddenly, Shin Sang who became a random spectator of a man's conversation, he was talking about just needing to show some acting skills to quietly defend the dungeon in Seoul. Seoul is where the Zhonghua Guild holds a monopoly on the dungeon under the pretext of protection. It's also the only place where the National Security Agency doesn't slack off, as it keeps a very large-scale market with truly killer prices underneath. You can't find a second market of this scale anywhere, so you can't complain. Shin Kan who thought that he should have gotten rid of the training daggers by now, so he decided to try a new one. Dagger of Blue Sky's delight if the wielder does not participate in battles for more than 30 minutes, his stamina regeneration rate doubles. Shin Kan who decided to buy this dagger after all, because unlike other hunters, he didn't need to mess around with mana, but he needed as much stamina as possible to use his hypersensitivity. While walking around Seoul, Shin Kang who noticed a young family who blindly believed that the National Security Agency and the Zhonghua Guild would keep them safe from all harm. Just a couple minutes later the child was grabbed by some strangers the man asked for their child back, but all to no avail. The man tearfully asked passers-by to call the National Security Agency. To pull something like this off in the middle of the day, and in Seoul, they must not be smart at all, Shin Tsung who thought. Shin Kang who decided to try it on the kidnappers and let the agency handle the rest. Suddenly, Che Guanyun of the Zhonghua Guild appeared with the spirit of the war demon and the constellation granting skills of sword wielding and spatial manipulation. Shin Kang who didn't think he would meet his colleague Chang Shiwen under such circumstances. He usually doesn't get involved in this kind of trouble. Che Quangchen handed the bandits his card and told them that they could withdraw as much money as they wanted in exchange for giving the child to the parents. The bandits, having taken the money and given the child to the parents, instantly fled. But Che Quangyun got in the way of the bandits and used his power as a swordsman who skillfully manipulated space to destroy one of the bandits. After destroying the second bandit as well, the guy announced to the civilians that they were definitely safe now. Everything happened exactly as Xin Gang who thought it would, they were no stranger to using independent hunters to increase the Zhonghua Guild's credibility and push their monopoly further. Let him enjoy it for now, Xin Tsang who thought, for everything that belongs to him will soon become Xin Tsang Hu's. Upon reaching the dungeon, Xin Kan Hu was met by two guards at the entrance. They reported that the dungeon had successfully initialized, but the guy was at the 20th level, which was below the recommended level. In order to successfully pull off all his schemes, Shin Kang needs to raise his level, otherwise he will miss the moment, and in addition, he will be hunted down. The guy needed to reach at least level 50, he would probably have a hard time, but there was no time to lose. A violent hurricane had begun. Shin Kang who could barely see anything, and if he hadn't left a trail behind him, he would have been lost long ago. The storm subsided, and the guy saw the sharp-skinned lizards in front of him. If everything went according to plan, Shin Kanhu would reach the right level sooner than expected. Meanwhile, 
CHA so he had gotten all the information about the guy and assumed that Shin Khan who had deliberately lured them onto his trail with mana. Shin Kang was lucky to be able to fool the cellular level hunter. However, Eclipse can't figure out how he managed to pull off the next move. Cho so he told the director that she crossed paths with the escaped prisoner a few days ago. According to the principal's considerations, CHO so he Shin Kangku level was at least a hundredth level. Meanwhile, Shin Tsang who was aiming straight for the stomach as he had feared, but he didn't do much damage, and realized that if things continued like this, he would spend forever with them like this. When fighting monsters, you need to pay attention to something, namely damage. Even if the monster is dead, but no damage is dealt, the kill will not count. But if at least one unit of health is removed, it's a different matter. Shin Kan who had managed to defeat many ordinary monsters, and now his level had increased manifold and reached the 27th level. Meanwhile, Cho So He decided to approach the very drawing that was made by Shin Kangu. He brought it out with a red substance, but for what purpose? During the investigation, Cho So He got a call from her master. She explained to him that she was still looking into it and the SKP wasn't a simple guy, just as they suspected. Cho So He asked her master to send another person to her because she thought there were inconsistencies in the director's words. She was furious, so she destroyed him. In Shin Tsang Hu's opinion, CHA So He must have already guessed that the escaped prisoner was him. But Shin Tsang Hu doesn't want to fall into their clutches so easily. Suddenly, the guy he had been waiting for heavily for his first skill came up behind him, which he immediately destroyed. After destroying that beast, Shin Kan Hu had appropriated the target skill of fire element in position. Shin Kan Hu now will be able to improve the skill with his constellation he can put the element of fire on all his weapons. The guards were shocked that the guy had disposed of the intermediate boss so quickly. The hunter seems to know his stuff, the boys thought. He led the fire elemental straight into the oasis and, outwitting the illusion, lured his target into its waters. Li Yerin ordered one of the guards to follow Shin Kanhu. He had passed the test brilliantly, but the girl was worried about his low level. Li Yerin also asked the guard to bail out Shin Tsanghu if he suddenly got into some kind of trouble. With a little more training, Shin Kanhu would be a real catch for blue eyes, the guard thought. Shin Kanhu, while wandering through the desert, met the intermediate boss rear protector. Shin Kanghu always chooses to work alone, because relying on others when you can't take care of yourself is a lost cause. Using his new skills, Shin can manage to easily defeat the intermediate boss. Shin Kanhu had obtained the skills side defense, rear defense, and front defense. By combining the three skills into one, the guy learned the defense barrier. The manually installed protective barrier is capable of withstanding multiple impacts. Shin Kanhu was much more capable than the guard thought, and maybe teamwork really wasn't necessary for the guy. A little later, the guard realized that it was too early to draw such conclusions. When the guy defeats the main boss, the guard will be sure of it for sure. Shin Kanhu had finally gotten to the person whose flaming blood he was doing all this for. The mage pelted Shin Kanhu with attack magic and also covered himself with defense. Shin Kanhu realized that it was better to fight the mage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but if he tried to get closer, he would definitely get hit. And if the guy gets even the slightest abrasion, Mac will instantly finish the guy off with his unique blood conversion skill. Shin Kan needed to think of another tactic, because the mage had probably already used all his skills against the guy, but he had only used jumping so far. The magician doesn't know about the other aces in Shin Tsang Hu's sleeve, none of them still haven't struck first. It'll take him a long time to find the guy's vulnerability. Mac finally gets close to Shin Kang, but still keeps throwing spells at the guy. Shin Kan Hu single-handedly straightened out Alicia Bristol low, and the guard finally concluded. Shin Kan who had assigned another skill to the target Blazing Blood, the level had now increased to level 32, and the guy had also obtained the main skill of the Assassin Class Acceleration. Meanwhile, CHA So He had found the place where Shin Kan who was staying and immediately reported it to her master. As the boys approached the door, they saw that it was closed, but remembered that would burns well and set it on fire. Some guy, seeing the whole picture, decided to text the landlady that the Eclipse guys had found their house and were looking for anything related to Shin Kanhu. What an attractive individual Shin Tsang Hu is, thought the gentleman, he is not settled anywhere, vigilant, but he is not afraid to take risks. In the Lord's opinion, CHA so he should learn from Shin Kanhu's caution, because if the guys recruited him, he would be a serious competition for her. To defeat Alicia was necessary for Shin Kanhu, because he had acquired the skill of blazing blood, and the things that fell from her, not bad green magic stone quite golden guy. The ring that enhances the effect of bleeding should not be forgotten, 
and the book of skills will obviously not be superfluous it is not for the class of the guy, but it will still come in handy. As soon as Shin Kanhu came out of the dungeon, his phone immediately caught the connection, and the guy saw a message saying that he was wanted by the Eclipse people. The informants of the Attention Flower Guild are keeping their eyes open, however, as expected from the daughter of the Zhonghua Guild organization. Kanhu realized that if Eclipse was on his trail, then Li Yerin was also in danger. To Li Yerin, Shin Kanku was just one of many business partners, and since the guy refused to join her guild, there was no point in her keeping silent. However, Blue Eyes is writhing with Eclipse for influence in Dijin, which means they have no reason to cooperate. Therefore, Shin Kanhu decided that he would just go catch Ho Chongtai as he planned. Shin Kanhu realized that he couldn't handle this task alone, so he decided that he needed to meet someone when he arrived. The man was already beginning to doubt whether he would be able to catch Ho Chong Tai. The guys understood that the guy was up to it for his fellow countrymen, but the incident in Yangpeng didn't fall under their jurisdiction, and it was the last house that appeared in the records. The guy went up and knocked on the door. As soon as it opened, the guy immediately asked if a man named Ho Chong Tai lived there, but the guy who opened the door informed me that he lived alone in that house. Shin Kanhu's familiar apologized to the guy for disturbing him and, turning his back to the door, hurried towards the elevator. The homeowner opened the door again and tried to shoot the guy, but the guy grabbed him and asked him to tell him what he knew about Ho Chon Ti. He explained that he had crossed paths with Ho Chon Ti only once, and that on the mission he had said he would kill anyone who tried to get on his trail. The guy only knew that Ho Chon Ti was very carefully hiding and that he was being roofed by serious people. Going outside, the guy wondered if that was why the investigation in Yangpeng had been stopped, and noticing the three silhouettes, he couldn't understand what the Seoul National Security Squad had left behind. There was no going back now, and the boy needed to get back to his hideout unnoticed. Suddenly out of nowhere, Shin Kang who ran out of nowhere and pulled the Nats guys away to make him run away. A little later, Shin Kang who found the hideout of Yu Do Hoon, who became very interested in how the guy knew of his whereabouts. Shin Kang who knew just about everything about Yu Do Hoon, from his level to working for the sole branch of the NSA. Yu Do Hun thought that Shin Kang who also had him followed or was from their ranks himself, but the guy explained that it's neither, but he knows why the guy is looking for Ho Chong Tai. Shin Kang who suggested that Yu Do Hun join him and search for Ho Chong Tai together. Meanwhile, CHA So he had already reached Li Erin's office. Li Erin was furious that CHA So he dared to poke her nose into her office. CHA So he asked Li Erin to call her order. After all, she didn't come today to fight. Holding out a picture of a guy, the girl asked if it was a familiar face to Li Yirin. After thinking for a bit, Yu Do Hun realized what kind of serious roof that guy was talking about. Shin Kung Hu was sure that Ho Chong Tai was being roofed by someone from the very top of the Chongwa Guild. Yu Do Hun didn't believe the guy's words, but Shin Tsang Hu didn't care if they believed him or not, but the fact remained. Ho Chong Tai was being hunted by both of them, so tomorrow at 6 o'clock in the evening, if Yu Do Hun came to the square, he would see the one he was looking for. Shin Tsang Hu explained to Yu Do Hong that it wasn't a trap at all, and if he was in doubt, he could check things out for himself. But if Shin Kung Hu's words turn out to be true, Yu Do Hun will have to team up with the guy for some business. Meanwhile, Li Yirin was beginning to realize that Eclipse was seriously interested in Shin Kan Hu since she had sent a hunting dog after him. Li Yirin, without thinking for a long time, decided to tell CHA So He that she didn't know this guy's face or name. CHA So He became very angry and asked Li Yirin not to lie to her, because she already knew that he had been referred specifically to Li Yirin. Li Yirin didn't deny being referred, but then they didn't agree on terms, and that was the end of it. Li Yirin subtly hinted to CHA So He that if she didn't want to get kicked in the teeth, she should leave immediately. Li Yirin had one of her men set up surveillance on CHA So He, for now Li Yirin must always be aware of her movements. Li Yirin thought that if he warned Shin Kanhu that he was being hunted, his guild would surely only become nicer to him. Ho Chon Ti received a message that he was being followed and only laughed, because no one knew he was hiding in plain sight. But Shin Tsang Hu had been waiting for Ho Chong Tai at the door for a long time. The latter, realizing that he had been found, decided to use vision capture to escape, but he failed. Ho Chong Tai was shocked that Shin Tsang Hu had dodged his vision capture. Although he tried to be directly in front of him, apparently his resistance to magic is extremely high. Realizing that Shin Kang-hu now knows about his skills and the location of the hideout, Ho Chong Tai decided to get rid of the guy. Cha So He was very angry with Shin Sang Hu. Not only had he not contacted her, but he had also snuck out of Dijin in a couple of days. Cha So He regarded Shin Kang-hu as a real enemy, because from the looks of it, 
he was going to depose her and become their lord's new favorite, CHA so he thought that everyone made mistakes sometimes, and was sure that their master would understand her even if she accidentally destroyed Shin Kanhu. Meanwhile, Ho Chong Tai noticed that Shin Tsang Hu's eyes were sharp enough if he kept his distance from him, dodging attacks and watching. Ho Chong Tai decided to strike at point blank range, but Shin Tsang Hu had already distributed mana to all possible hiding places, so now, regardless of Ho Chong Tai's efforts, Shin Tsang Hu could see right through him. Ho Chong Tai realized that he didn't have the strength to fight a strong opponent like Shin Tsang Hu and decided to quietly escape but it was too late to escape Shin Kang who wounded him and he began to threaten that those covering him would tear him apart. Shin Kang who knew that the NSA was actively using apps for their business, and Yu Dohan for a commemorative gift often uses this watch. Shin Kang who explained that in order for the NSA to deactivate Yu Dohun's friend's account, they would have to recognize him as having been killed in the line of duty, but Ho Chong Ti's patrons didn't want that to happen. They probably wanted to keep it quiet. The NSA Seoul and Japan divisions put pressure on, and so it was decided to simply rehide the account rather than disable it. Nevertheless, the few people who had access to the information must have read the investigation data and decided to look into the apartments. If Shin Kang Hu keeps his promise, Yo Do Hoon will have to help him by using that account. Yo Do Hun realized that if Shin Tsang Hu was telling the truth, then the Chongwa Guild and the NSA were really behind all of this. Shin Kang Hu chose a time when there were many people on the streets because if Yu Do Hun decided to arrest him, even the patrons wouldn't be able to stop him. But even if Yu Do Hun decides to commit an act of revenge, Shin Tsang Hu won't stop him. The guys decided not to do anything illegal with Ho Chong Tai and just report to the proper authorities. Shin Tsang Hu received 300 million won, an admission to the dungeon for providing Ho Chong Tai. Shin Tsang Hu didn't expect Yu Do Hun to give up on his revenge after all. However, Yu Do Hun was sure that Ho Chong Tai would have done the same, for both of them wanted something to rely on in such a harsh world. Yu Do Hun wanted the NSA to atone for their past sins, so if Shin Kang Hu's words are true, he can't leave the deeds of the Zhonghua Guild and the NSA unanswered. Shin Kang Hu realized that the guy would go down the same path as in the book where Yu Do Hun led a rebellion against the NSA. In the novel, he is portrayed as a villain and an enemy of the Zhonghua Guild, as is Shin Kang Hu. He was caught by Che Guan Yun after his run-in with Ho Chong Tai, but this time no one left a trace, so events should unfold differently. Che Quanchen learned that Ho Chong Tai had been arrested with broken arms and in critical condition, but it didn't matter to him now as he had become useless. Che Quanchen only wanted to know the identity of the person who did this to Ho Chong Tai. The police officer should have still had the hunter's registration number, but when he logged into his account, he realized that all the information was gone. It seems that someone else had deleted all the data through another police account. Che Quanchen got very angry and started reprimanding his subordinates when Chang Shiwen entered the room and wanted to know what was wrong. Perhaps everything the guy experienced while in the body of the villainous Shin Kang Hu was exactly what he wanted to write in his novel. Che Quanchen explained to Chang Shiwen that someone had intentionally broken his instrument. Chang Shiwen had told Che Quanchen many times to behave honorably, no matter what dangers were encountered along the way. Anyone who dares to interfere with the fulfillment of the dream will eventually be wiped out. Meanwhile, the boy met intermediate boss Janan on his way. He was not an easy opponent, and if he was caught off guard, it would be bad. Intermediate boss Janan had used the shadow step skill to attack Shin Kanhu. Now the guy needed to catch the right moment. The fight was tough, but Shin Kan managed to catch the right moment and destroy intermediate boss Janan. Intermediate boss Janan probably didn't expect Shin Kanhu to use illusions and ambush him, especially that the guy would sneak up on him and attack him at the right moment. Shin Kanhu defeated the intermediate boss and learned the enemy skill Shadow Step. The skill level was at its maximum level. Shin Kanhu's level had increased to 33. He felt that he had handled the first stage of his plan gracefully. When the main boss approached the guy from behind, he realized that everything was developing just like in the novel. The guy realized that he was facing a fight with the main boss Shin Kanhu. Shin Kanhu decided to fight hand to hand. It was pointless to use illusions because Shin Kanhu would immediately recognize his mana traces. Since both have the ability to capture vision, it means they know each other's weaknesses. Fighting off the short jump and steel combination will be extremely difficult. Based on the whole situation, the guy was left with only hand to hand combat. It looked like Shin Kanhu's mana had already run out, but what he couldn't copy was his hypersensitivity to it. Thanks to Shin Kan, the guy realized that his hypersensitivity to mana was proving useful. 
The guy had access to improve the skill disposable, which is what he went to the hidden dungeon for. Chang Shiwen was left without a dungeon, it was a good thing that Shin sang hu was the one to go through this one-time dungeon. But Shin kan hu didn't think that he would get a red crystal and a skill book to top it off. Red crystals are rare ingredients to improve items or skills. Shin kan hu decided that nice things like red crystals shouldn't be given to Chang Shiwen, so he kept them for himself. First of all, Shin kan hu decided to use the book since it was perfect for his class. Shin kan hu received an alert that he should be more careful and look around for attacks could be from the back and deal 33% more damage. The next day, outside the Piantake station, Li Yirin saw Shin kang outside of the Dijin neighborhood for the first time. Li Erin had a few questions for Shin Kang. The first was why he transferred 100 million won to her. Shin Tsang who assumed that CHA so he must have been looking for him, and if she had even heard about the guy, she would have come to Yangpeng in a heartbeat. So he transferred the money to calm her down a bit. Li Yirin explained to the guy that the girl was really looking for him and was massacring the hunters along the way. Li Yirin doesn't give out information about his performers to anyone, and Shin Kang who is no exception. Shin Tsang who also revealed that he had caught Ho Chong Tai. Therefore, he had to hide his identity, and because of that, even if he fulfills Blue Knight's orders, he won't be able to receive a percentage of the bounty. Li Yirin was shocked that Shin Kang who caught Ho Chong Tai and left no trace behind him. Li Yirin was once again surprised at how capable Shin Kang who was. Li Yirin wondered how she should address the guy now, since she recognized his real name thanks to CHA Sohi. Shin Kang Hu explained that since they were still looking for him, it was better to continue using the alias Sung Yu. Li Yirin gave the guy a new order and explained that the customer herself would bring him up to speed. She wanted to assess the guy's abilities personally. The customer's name was Yoon Sanmi. When she met the guy, she offered to take him to a safe bus. The safe bus was closely guarded by heavily armed hunters. It's not cheap, but the life of the person who hired them is definitely not in danger. Shin Kang Hu was glad for this turn of events, because he could stay on the bus until they got to Olsen. Barely closing his eyes, Shin Kang Hu heard the guards whispering and suspected something wrong, so he changed his mind about sleeping. As it turned out, Shin Kang Hu wasn't worried for nothing. One of the guards came up behind him and wanted to shoot him. Thanks to his skills, Shin Kan Hu dodged and destroyed the guard rather quickly. Shin Kan Hu noticed that one of the passengers had the neutral constellation Father of Music, which speeds up the body's recovery by five times when listening to classical music. Shin Kang Hu asked Yoon Sammy to get these guys out of his way, otherwise they would only get in each other's way. Yoon Sammy thought it was a good idea, because this way she would be able to see what the guy was capable of. Shin Kan Hu, with all his skills, was able to deal with all the guards very quickly. Another reward awaited Shin Kan Hu, he destroyed the target and appropriated his contract with Constellation. Yoon Sammy, being the captain of the Taewagang River, would like to hire Shin Kang Hu. Shin Kang Hu didn't know much about the organizations in Ulsan, except that he made up names and briefly mentioned who died and who survived. Yoon Sanmi stated that the reward for a successfully completed task would be two and a half billion. Shin Kang Wu agreed to bring the left arm of Gong Tisu, Ulsan's thunderbolt, only under one more condition. Shin Kang Hu offered to help Taewagang River gain dominance over Ulsan, and in return, Yoon Sanmi would arrange for him to meet the leader of the Abyss. The Abyss was the most cohesive and organized of all the factions of the Zhonghua Guild, although in the plot of the novel it broke up due to internal disagreements. Shin Kang Wu was about to cross paths with them, because without such groups, it would be meaningless to defeat the Chongwa Guild. But he didn't think that this chance would come so quickly. The Taihuang River is a satellite of the Abyss, in other words, an opportunity to reach their patrons. Yoon Sammy suggested that the guy discuss all the details after she saw the results. Yoon Sammy led the boy to the dungeon where Gong Tisu frequented. There were many people gathered at the entrance of the dungeon, and Shin Kan Hu suspected that they were not gathered there for a raid. Yoon Sammy didn't deny Shin Kang Hu's suspicion and suggested that he use the fireworks tactic. The term was used for when mercenaries unite to massacre a strong target. There is no bloodshed in such cases, but thanks to the sacrifices of others, the survivor wins the victory. The same would have happened in this case if Shin Tsang Hu had not intervened. In the novel, Gun Tisu survived, but Shin Kang Hu knew his constellation and battle habits, which increased his chances of a successful outcome. Since Gong Tisu had made a lot of enemies, there were many orders to eliminate him. About a hundred people will gather at the entrance. The leader of the Bogrove Blood, Gong Tisu, 
whose name was abhorred by all Ulsan residents, was a criminal mastermind with an army and business associates. Gong Tisu was a psychopath who massacred everyone without a shred of pity, it was through these acts that he earned the fame of Ulsan's butcher. There were plenty of orders to eliminate Gong Tisu, but his equipment was above level 200, making destroying him a difficult task. Almost all of Guntisu's magical skills are applied with his left hand, so the reward for her is higher than for himself. Most of the mercenaries will be after this particular hand, all of them waiting for their chance when Gong Tisu comes out of the dungeon. Shin Kanhu decided to buy a ring that reduced pain and had a high stamina index. The ring was worth 500 million won, and the guy had to sell everything he had. Shin Kanhu was looking for equipment that might come in handy, but it wasn't the equipment that interested him first and foremost. Gong Tisu didn't have a constellation when he entered the dungeon, but his subordinates had them. Looks like the guys fooled everyone with a clone and a fake, and Gong Tisu is clearly up to something. Shin Sung Hu wondered where the real Gong Tisu was. He knew that he had a habit of double checking his equipment before doing anything, and he might be in a different market. Suddenly, Shin Kan Hu noticed a passing person had the neutral constellation Glowing Archer, which increased the accuracy of magic attacks and archery by five times. It looked like the guy had found Gong Tisu. Shin Kan Hu realized that it wasn't just the clothes. If it wasn't for the constellation, he wouldn't have guessed that it was Gong Tisu. The people around Gong Tisu were clearly not random. They all had their own constellations. Shin Kan Hu would gladly deal with him right there, but if he continued to get in his face, there would be no avoiding suspicion. As much as Shin Tsang Hu didn't want to, he would have to follow Gong Tisu since he wanted to find out what the man was up to. Meanwhile, Gong Tesu had only one thing on his mind, he wanted to see the faces of all those who would realize that they had been fooled. Suddenly it seemed to Gong Taisu that someone had run up to his company and was following them, but there was no one to be found. Shin Kung Hu realized everything and now he's going to deal with Gong Tisu with his own methods. Yoon Sammy thought it was strange that Song Yu was late, the girl couldn't understand where he had disappeared to. Yoon Sammy's subordinate didn't like Sung Gi Yu at all, he thought that he was a spy from the Jongwa Guild. More recently, the White Rose Squad was completely slaughtered in a similar fashion, they were all hunted down and destroyed. The leader of the Blue Eyes, Li Yerin, built her reputation by supplying mercenaries to all factions rather than forging an alliance with any one of them. The fact that Li Yerin manages to remain neutral amongst all the major figures means that she clearly knows what she's doing, and does it quite skillfully. Since Shin Kanhu had been recommended by Blue Eyes, and since he had such impressive abilities, then waiting for him a little longer wouldn't be a sin for Yun Sanmi. Yun Sanmi received an encrypted message and ordered her subordinate to gather and evacuate everyone from there. Yun Sanmi didn't have time to evacuate the people as they noticed Gong Tisu coming out of the dungeon and pounced on him. The people from Bogrove Blood realized that they had fallen into a trap, but it was too late to escape. People didn't realize where the attacks were flying at them from and from which side they were being attacked. Shin Kan who saw what was happening and realized that he had not expected this from a sacred archer at all. When Gong Tisu was about to strike again, Shin Tsung Hu decided to attack him from behind. During the fight, Shin Kang Hu was able to injure the seemingly invincible Gong Tisu. Gong Tisu was very unhappy that Shin Kang Hu had injured him and threatened to destroy the guy. But before the battle began, Shin Kang Xu informed Yun Sanmi that the person who entered the dungeon was not the real Gong Tisu, but wanted to gather the mercenaries in one place and massacre them. Shin Kang Hu also said that the real Gong Tisu would be at a distance with his squad and asked them to keep their heads down and move towards the building that would explode. Shin Kang Hu warned that an enraged Gong Tisu would come out to meet them without his left arm. Yun Sanmi didn't understand at all how Shin Tsang Hu could know such details. Yun Sanmi and her team had caught all the ill wishes, but the number of casualties were significant, and they could be among them. Yun Sanmi explained to Shin Kan that they would be busy eliminating minor opponents for a while, and once things settled down, she would contact him and fulfill her promise. Meanwhile, Shin Tsang Hu was already at Li Yerin's place, with Gong Tisu's left hand, she was quite happy to see him back in Dijin. Shin Kang Hu asked Li Yerin if there was any news about CHA Sohi. She replied that she was in Jianju and the girl with so and deliberately put her on a false trail. Li Yerin saw the news and judging from the news, Shin Tsang Hu is now a real star even though no one knows who he is. Shin Kang Hu realized that events were beginning to unfold differently than in the novel, and while he couldn't worry about Gong Tisu, he had to be much more careful with Chang Shiwen. Li Yerin asked Shin Kang Hu if he would continue to work for Blue Eyes. He replied that he would until a more attractive option became available. Li Yerin suggested Shin Kung Hu to discuss the next order of business. Cho Gribin's boyfriend's new target, 
Cho Gmibin was a serial killer who specialized in children and was last seen at the epicenter. Li Yerin handed an envelope to Shin Kanhu and explained that all the information he needed was in this particular envelope. Shin Kanhu assumed that he would go there earlier than he had planned, but he needed to prepare himself first. Meanwhile, Chang Shiwen, watching the news about Shin Kanhu, was surprised, although he didn't know who it was, his abilities impressed him. Chang Shiwen called the Information and Strategy Division of the Zhonghua Guild and asked them to find out everything about the Gong Tisu incident, as he was interested in the hunter who had destroyed his left arm. Meanwhile, Shin Kanku showed up at the Suan World Guild. The guy wanted to purchase the Balto Dungeon license for one billion, because he only needed to conduct one raid. Han Sung Hyok, the general manager of the Dungeon Management Group, was sure that he and the guy hadn't met before, and explained that they didn't issue a dungeon license to just anyone. Suddenly the general manager jumped up and asked the guy to follow him, he wanted to discuss the deal elsewhere. The general manager was sure that the Balto dungeon was just us selling for nothing, but Shin Kang who thought that for one billion, it wasn't worth it. In the dungeon, Shin Kang who met with Balto's main boss. He asked him not to waste his life and to leave. Shin Kang who paid no attention to the words of Balto's main boss, as he only seemed like a pitiful creature. Shin Kang who realized that this was the moment, after defeating Alicia, the guy had gotten his skill book. Without thinking for long, Shin Kanhu threw a book at Balto's main boss and made him eat it. While Balto's main boss was realizing what he had eaten, nightmare beheading had already begun to take effect. Balto, realizing he was left unarmed and unable to use his skills, flew into a rage. Shin Kanhu wanted to stretch the pleasure of the fight a little longer and used a protective barrier that helped him last a couple more seconds. There was no need for more. Everything was happening exactly as Shin Kanhu had calculated, using the blazing blood, the guy had destroyed the main boss. Shin Kanhu had successfully reached the 39th level and obtained another new skill. Even though the monster has a different class, it can still learn any skill. Therefore, if Shin Kanhu successfully taught a monster any skill and intercepted it after winning, he would be able to learn the skill himself. Shin Kanhu now realized that he could safely advance to the epic enter on his own. The only way to get to the epic enter is through Soul Station. When he reached the station, he realized that he didn't like everything that was happening. On that fateful day, guild leader Zhonghua and Fortune made an agreement. Thirteen stars, thirteen hunters are presented as heroes in the novel, including Chang Shiwen and his colleagues. But in reality, the world will be under their control in the finale, and it's scary to realize that they control the press all over the world. They have no difficulty in establishing the public's correct opinion of themselves. When they start openly acting together, people will only be happy, people will start honoring them as an army of heroes. It occurred to the guy to write about it, and now he has to unravel it all. Suddenly, Shin Kan who heard a girl's disgruntled voice from behind him, who resented that Seoul was boring, the prices were high, and no one needed anyone there without connections. Shin Kan who turned to the girl, realized that she was trying to enter his mind, and repelled her strike. The hostile constellation of the enchanting fox girl caught Shin Kan's eye. Shin Kanhu realized that the girl was one of the 13 stars named Yu Chunhua. A little later, Shin Kanhu became interested in the world he couldn't see into, but there was alas nothing that could be done about it. However, there are methods to reflect her psychological skills. Specifically her skills are used by the girl to get people comfortable with a pleasant impression. People relax in her company, and their psychological barrier is simply turned off. Shin Kanhu realized that if one thought about something unpleasant for a while, this barrier could be strengthened. Shin Kang who was intrigued by Yo Chunhua, she thought that in all of Korea, only Jiang Shiwen was capable of such a thing. Yu Chunhua took out a business card and explained to the guy that she only gave it to those who managed to reflect her skills at least once. The girl explained that if Shin Kanhu got tired of working in his homeland or decided to enlist their support, he could contact the Shinchu Guild. Shin Kanhu knew that the Xingta Guild was one of the top five most powerful guilds in China, and cooperating with them would not be easy. Shin Kanhu understood that it was impossible to defeat the 13 stars without allies. Upon reaching the appointed place, Shin Kanhu decided to search for treasures first before taking the order. The ability to sense mana and accumulate it in the body is incredibly useful, but if mana is accumulated beyond a certain level, it overloads the body. Shin Kanhu felt pain and a decrease in performance, if something like this happened during a battle, it would lead to death. Therefore, it was extremely important to learn how to overcome this overload. 
future opponents will only be stronger and more dodgy, so Shin Kanhu is obligated to get his hands on the poison Salakium since he has the opportunity. In the novel, Shin Kanhu often used this item because it has properties that make ordinary Salakium seem insignificant. When consumed, Venom Salakium dulls hypersensitivity to mana for 30 minutes. Despite the side effects, it's an extremely useful item. However, you can only find it at the Epic Enter, and rabid gardeners are always hanging around. Shin Kanhu thought that it would be a good idea to reach the 40th level since he had acquired a new skill. The Epic Enter is literally a wilderness of mutated monsters of many different species. At Epic Enter, even a Milizigan hiccup can be fatal. The guy noticed a body that looked too fresh, but just as Shin Kanhu thought, there was no mana emanating from the body. Shin Kanhu realized that it was a dark guide trap baiting the hunters, and if the guy touched it, a tracking tag would be attached to him. Walking a little further, Shin Kanhu was shocked that the cliff was so close to the exit. Shin Kanhu reached for Salakium, but suddenly a gardener popped out unexpectedly. Shin Kanhu didn't hesitate and immediately attacked the gardener and easily destroyed him. After defeating an ordinary monster, Shin Kanhu raised his level to 40 and learned the new skill evasion. Shin Kanhu was happy about the new level, now he could welcome the uninvited guests with full honors. Suddenly, Shin Kanhu noticed that someone was following him and grabbed the girl and tried to find out why she was following him. It turns out that he is being followed by Zhong Yuri, the daughter of a wealthy businessman, a diligent student and role model. The girl was famously close to Che Quan Heng, the school's vice president. However, Che Quanchen cut ties with the girl when her father's business went bust and the family's wealth dwindled. This is why in the novel she is an enemy of Che Quang Yun with a personal dislike for him, although Shin Kang Hu didn't specifically spell this out. Jorn Yui apologized to Shin Kang Hu if she caused any inconvenience. The girl acknowledged that the guy was adorable, he had just arrived at the epic enter and already he was easily avoiding the dark guides trap. Shin Kang Hu ordered Jorn Yui to stop chasing him and leave immediately. Shin Kang Hu is tired as he has exhausted himself five times in a row, but still, he has cleared all six zones and it looks like it's time to start ordering. The bug in that guy's body wasn't particularly dangerous. The creature that put it there wasn't. Dark guides are creatures of the ghostly thicket, almost invisible at night due to their dark color and silent nature. Even if spotted, the usual methods of extermination will not work. Anyone unlucky enough to be in her path would lose their minds completely and end up killing themselves in a fit of madness. Shin Kanhu was not going to share their fate. Night came, and the dark guide's attack began. Shin Kanhu fought him with all his might. The dark guide was only afraid of two things, the first being the powers that the guides themselves possess, the magic of shadows, and the second its exact opposite, the magic of light. When complete opposites converge on the same territory, the fight continues until one falls away. Shin Kanhu, after returning to that guy's body, decided that it was better to bring him back to his homeland. But first, he had to fulfill the customer's will. All the information in the envelope was personally collected by the father of one of the victims. It wasn't an easy crime, so Li Yerin asked the guy to do exactly as instructed. Following the trail of mana, Shin Sung Hu was able to find the intruder Cho Bibin very quickly. Cho Bibin had gotten a hostile constellation after destroying another victim and was already looking for the next victim to level up. Shin Kan Hu didn't wait long and was the first to pounce on Cho Bibin. He didn't even realize what had happened or who the guy was. Cho Bibin wondered how long the stranger would last with his skills. Shin Kan Hu realized that Cho Bibin was also a high level mage due to the constellation. Cho Bibin's magic resistance was much higher than Ho Chong Ti's, and the vision capture he would surely repel. Shin Kan needed to somehow break through Cho Bibin's ice armor, so he used acceleration. But Cho Bibin wasn't so simple. He could create spears out of red matter, and the guy would now have to be exposed to them. This was the first time Shin Kan Hu had seen the effect of this skill in action, and it was quite a useful bonus. Cho Bibin stated that he could have destroyed the guy with one punch and taken his stuff. Shin Kang Hu asked Cho Bibin why he was destroying innocent children. Cho Bibin liked to play on the trust of children, believing them to be pure, naive, and brainless. In this business he liked best to pretend friendliness, to rub in trust and then destroy, for the desperation on the children's faces excited him. Claiming that all the children were his toys, Cho Bibin pounced on Shin Kan Hu using his ice wall ability. Shin Kan Hu was determined to show Cho Bibin what it was like to be someone's toy, and used his illusion magic. Cho Bibin didn't realize where the real Shin Tsang Hu was at all and started attacking everyone around him. Shin Kan Hu, showing how much it hurts to be cheated, hurt Cho Bibin badly. Shin Kan Hu contacted the customer, 
thanking him for his patience and promising that he would avenge his daughter. Meanwhile, CHA so he got to the security cameras at the Seoul train station and realized that, judging from the direction of the train, Shin kang -hoo was headed north. CHA so he ordered her subordinates to let her know as soon as the guy picks up his business and returns to Seoul again. Meanwhile, Shin kang -hoo made Cho Gwibin apologize to the father of the girl he destroyed and sent him to the next world. The customer thanked Shin Kanha and said that his daughter was probably happy. According to the girl's father, Shin Kan Hu did what the law and the NSA could not handle. Shin Kan Hu had only fulfilled his order and sincerely hoped that the soul of the customer's daughter would rest in peace. For all the belongings of the destroyed Cho Bibin, Shin Kan Hu could fetch about a billion. Suddenly Li Yerin called and praised the guy for a job well done. The customer left the guy a tip of two billion. Shin Kang Hu asked Li Yirin to retrieve the guy's body from the epicenter and identify him. Suddenly, the guy felt a movement from behind and it was Zhong Yuri again. Shin Kang Hu had warned her to stop following him. What does she want now? Zhong Yuri explained that there was an intermediate boss in the dungeon that she couldn't defeat. She asked Shin Kang Hu to go with her. As he approached the dungeon, Shin Kang Hu noticed that it looked as if it was about to collapse, although it was not surprising in such dungeons. Shin Kan Hu knew that Epicenter was a location with many hidden dungeons, and that place must have many secrets. The guy agreed to go down into the dungeon with the girl, because it was a good deal. He could see what kind of person Jorn Yui was and see if she had the potential to be a threat to the Zhongwa guild. Going a little farther, the boy saw the writing on the wall. The inscription said that whoever stepped into the depths with a bloody soul would be buried there forever. Shin Kan Hu decided to ask the girl who the intermediate boss was. The girl replied that he was a monster that favored crushing ranged combat. The girl was only able to get close to him once, and as the opportunity presented itself, she immediately attacked. But the self-defense skill of that monster, blocking the damage from the first attacks, nullified the girl's efforts. Shin Kang Hu and Jorn Yuri finally went down to the dungeon and destroyed their first enemy. After walking a little further, they came across the intermediate boss that the girl was talking about. Sportless intermediate boss likes to pile on the attacks and has a defense skill. Shin Kan Hu asked the girl to focus on her skill and hit the monster on the head. The girl knew that because of the barrage of ranged attacks, getting close to the monster would be difficult. Despite the monster's best efforts to keep them close, Zhong Yui still managed to toss Shin Kang Hu at him. Zhong Yui didn't want to be left out, and with the help of an electric charge, the guys worked together to take down the intermediate boss. The girl was much more capable than Shin Kang Hu had expected, and if she continued like this, she would be able to fight back against the Chongwa guild as well. Walking a little farther, the boys noticed a man sitting on his knees praying. Chong Yuri and Shin Tsang Hu couldn't figure out who this person was. Could it really be the head boss, Shin Tsang Hu thought. Something strange began to happen. Shin Kan Hu did not hesitate to throw his dagger at the man, thus destroying him. They were not mistaken, it turned out to be the main boss, who for some reason lacked all skills. Suddenly, the dungeon began to reset, and Shin Kan Hu ordered Chong Yuri to abandon it and get out as soon as possible. The guy also did not wait for the complete destruction of the dungeon and hurried to the exit, thinking about the fact that such a major boss he clearly did not expect to see. Shin Kan Hu really didn't want to waste valuable items, but otherwise, he risked staying there forever. Even though Shin Kan Hu had prescribed the effects of that plant himself, it was a different thing to feel them in person. Not only was the pain like being hit by a hand, but my senses were also heightened. Chong Yui used up all her mana, and twisted her leg and fell down from helplessness. The guys only had a little bit left to leave the dungeon. Taking the girl in his arms, Shin Kang Hu moved towards the exit. Shin Kang Hu and Zhang Yui barely made it out, and despite the difficulty of the dungeon, the guy still benefited from the skill he had taken from the intermediate boss. The skills level was raised to the maximum level and now it regenerates faster. Zhong Yuri thanked the guy for risking his life and helping her, because she definitely wouldn't have gotten out alone. The events taking place reminded the girl very much of her past, so her body became paralyzed. In the past, the girl was a guide of the Zhonghua guild. She was originally just a simple guide who helped other hunters. But one day, Che Quanchen of the Zhonghua guild came upon Zhong Yuri. They were the best in the country, and the girl believed Che Quangchen and joined their ranks. But during one of the raids the girl was seriously hurt. When Che Quangyun found out that she wouldn't be able to return to work for a long time because of her wounds, he said there was no point in wasting time on ballast, and the guys left. Shin Kanhu was outraged. After all, 
throwing a wounded man into the dungeon was like destroying him with his own hands. Jung Yui miraculously managed to survive and escape. If the girl hadn't made a contract with a constellation that helps manipulate space, she wouldn't be sitting next to Shin Kanku. Shin Kanhu didn't think that it was purely a matter of luck. Constellation didn't contract hunters for nothing. Most likely, it saw potential in the girl. Jung Yui was so relieved when she spoke out. That was the reason why she decided to go to the epic enter. Apparently, in his heart of hearts, Jong Yui still wants to learn to trust other people again. Suddenly, Shin Kanhu started to fall down. The girl was frightened, but the guy explained to her that it was the side effects of using poison salakium and he just needed to rest. Shin Kanhu said that he needed to finish his task, said goodbye to the girl and said that they would definitely meet again. Shin Kanhu decided that while he was on the train, why don't he check out Huntergram? Huntergram is a social network exclusively for hunters. It is usually used as a platform for self-promotion and information dissemination. Che Guanyun of Zhongwa, the face of the greatest guild in the country, put safety and teamwork above all else. Shin Kanghu came across the news that the Daewa River was gaining serious influence in Ulsan. Shin Kanghu was genuinely happy that Yun Sanmi and her team didn't mess up, after all, the girl had promised the guy something. Shin Kanhu wondered if the constellations were happy with all those contracts. After all, a contract binds the constellation that rules the world to the most ordinary people. In the novel, Shin Kanghu described it just so he could ridicule Chang Shiwen subordinates. It was only natural for constellations to do so. When their bearers fight among themselves, the constellations directly fight each other. Constellations do not rule the world, but are only one of its components. Who is above them, they cannot divulge. Even Shin Kanhu, the author, couldn't know absolutely everything about this world, and maybe the answers lie in the guy's subconscious mind thought he. Shin Kanhu received a message from Li Yirin that according to their data, CHA Sohi is at Seoul Station. It happened faster than Shin Kanhu had expected. But his plans had changed. He planned to deal with CHA Sohi after he cleared another dungeon. Instead of Seoul Station, Shin Ganghu decided to go to Seoul Express Bus Terminal to conquer the underground at Guangzhou Terminal. Shin Kanghu came close to the Guangzhou Terminal for one reason it's where you can use the pass the guy was awarded by the NSA. Shin Kanghu has erased all of his information, so no one will be able to track him down. Shin Kanghu thought that if he gained experience there, it would be easier to deal with CHA Sohi. Shin Kanhu noticed that some guys from the Heen Scum Guild were bullying the girl. In the novel, the Han Guild was secretly led by Jiang Shiwen, and on his instructions they exterminated one of Zhong Hua's troops at some point. Shin Kanhu swept up that one of the attackers had a pretty good neutral constellation of Grifter of the Century. Shin Kanhu had no reason to stand by, so the guy decided to see what this guy's constellation was in reality. Meanwhile, at Seoul Station, CHA Sohi was getting nervous because they had been there for quite some time. Did Shin Kanghu take a different route, CHA Sohi thought. CHA Sohi received a call from her master who was wondering if the girl had caught Shin Kanhu. She replied that she hadn't. The master didn't think it would prove to be such a difficult task for CHA Soha. The master asked CHO Sohi to find Shin Kanhu as soon as possible and be sure to deliver him alive. Meanwhile, Shin Kanhu was trying to get his prize, and he managed to destroy his target and appropriate her constellation contract. With the constellation of Rogue of the Age, Shin Kanhu would get every hundredth unit of experience some rare item, so the guy was eager to reach the hundredth level sooner rather than later. The girl Jin Hyon, who was rescued by Shin Kanhu, thanked him and asked him to give her his number, because she thought she needed to thank the guy somehow. Meanwhile, CHA Sohi grabbed the guy Li Yerin sent to follow her. The dungeon had already opened, and Shin Kanhu moved there. The guy expected to raise around 800 million for a good guild of scum. Li Yirin warned Shin Kanghu to be careful, because CHA Sohi had destroyed their watcher, and was apparently already on her way to Guangzhou. CHO Soha was a level 250th, and the constellation was far from weak. She wasn't called the hunting dog for nothing. Shin Kanhu was only at level 49, and if he gained even two levels, the guy wouldn't stand a chance against her. Therefore, he decided to take care of his dungeon for now. CHA Sohi had already reached the Guangzhou terminal. Her team had gotten rid of the Hain Guild, and the outpost and bus station were now under their command. After descending into the dungeon, Shin Kanhu met Seijin's main boss. As expected, he made a real fuss. Shin Kanhu dealt with the three phantoms with a single blow. He was far away and throwing daggers was a waste of time. 
If Shin Kanhu decides to fight him head on, he will simply use up his self defense and dodge perfectly. The skills of Seijin's main boss were interesting, but what good would they do if Shin Kanhu wouldn't be set up? Shin Kanhu noticed that the main boss Seijin in the circle is not afraid of anything. So the guy decided to destroy him. With a lot of effort and knowledge, Shin Kan managed to defeat the main boss and appropriated his target skill Formidable Wind Whirlwind. When using this skill, stealth stops its effect, because even at the maximum level of possession it cannot be combined with combat skills. After Shin Kanhu achieved his goal, he decided to visit the store first. Seeing Shin Kanhu, CHA so he couldn't believe her eyes. She thought the guy would continue to hide like a rat. He can't spend his whole life running around with a hunting dog on his tail, Shin Kanhu stated. Shin Kanhu really wanted to destroy CHA so he, after all, hiding was useless. Meanwhile at the Guangzhou outpost, Han Soen hoped that Shin Tsung Hu would be okay. Li Yirin reassured Han Soen, because Shin Kang Hu can handle even the most difficult tasks. Li Yirin suggested that Han Soen should not hesitate and immediately move out. Han Soen stated that Shin Kang Hu doesn't like to be helped if he doesn't ask for it. To which Li Erin replied that he would get over it. To part with a talented worker like Shin Tsung Hu, Li Yirin had no desire to part with him. Suddenly a crowd of guys appeared in front of the girls, and they realized they were on the spot. Shin Kang Hu noticed that CHO so he possessed a constellation that allowed the user to see hidden things. It wasn't the most pleasant thing for the guy. Shin Kang Hu realized that neither vision capture nor illusion magic would work on CHO so he. Even his newly learned stealth wouldn't help him in battle. Given CHO so has love of fire elements, the imposition of the same element could be forgotten about. CHA so he knew how to set the heat, so it was good that Shin Tsung Hu had strengthened his defense barrier and improved his new weapon. Shin Kan Hu's opponent was a mage, but since he had strengthened his defense barrier and weapon's bleeding effect, it was only necessary to change from ranged combat to melee combat. Meanwhile, Li Yirin and Han Soen had dealt with the team of guys, but still hadn't found Shin Tsung Hu. The girls realized that they had to hurry, because something told them that they were in the wrong place. CHA so he decided to explain to the guy that everything he's doing is useless, and soon Shin Kang Hu will meet his end. Jin Heen watched the fight carefully and thought about how good it was that she didn't do anything about it back then. After all, to think about making CHA so he herself sweat. This Shin Kang Hu is an interesting person, Jin Heen thought. After clearing the top of the dungeon, he had mastered the skill of the main boss. Jin Heen reported to the master that CHA so he was losing. Looks like his dear Sohi is losing his grip, thought the master. Master took CHA Sohi under his wing when she needed it, and in return, the girl dealt with those who got in his way. Fire is CHA Sohi's specialty. Shin Kang Hu assumed that the girl was going to pelt him with fire projectiles. Shin Kang Hu thought that he wouldn't live long at this rate, so he decided to sneak closer to the girl. Shin Kang Hu was still able to sneak closer to CHO Sohi and planned to get behind her and attack from the back. But CHA Sohi had already learned all of Shin Kanhu's capabilities and tricks, so she easily suspended the guy. Shin Kanhu gathered all his strength into a fist and repelled CHA Sohi's punch, depriving her of her arm. By sacrificing her hand, CHA Sohi had saved her life, but it seemed the girl had no intention of leaving without victory. She wanted to turn Shin Kunya into ashes. Suddenly, the fight was suddenly stopped by Han Soen and Li Yirin. By the way, the girls came in very timely and saved Shin Kang Hu. Li Yirin replaced Shin Kang Hu in the fight to show CHO Sohi that it was already over. But suddenly CHO Sohi disappeared, and none of the guys had any idea where she had gone. Throughout the entire battle, Shin Kang Hu had been bothered by the last constellation of CHO Sohi, the Ace of Worldly Wisdoms. Constellation Ace of Worldly Wisdom specializes in worldly wisdom and allows you to copy a weakened version of an enemy skill once per day. Shin Kang Hu kept wondering what exactly CHA Sohi was stealing. Turns out she stole his stealth. Shin Kang Hu kept wondering what exactly CHA Sohi was stealing, but it turns out she stole the guy's stealth. Shin Kang Hu informs Li Yirin and Han Soen that CHA Sohi won't attack again since she escaped. Li Yirin offered to run after her, but suddenly Shin Tsung Hu collapsed from helplessness, and the girls decided to take him to the hospital. Running away, CHA Sohi cursed the girls for how dare they interfere in her fight. CHA so he didn't understand what Shin Kanhu was even like. Not only does he have too many skills, 
but he also uses the ones that only dungeon bosses have. Could it be that Shin Sang-hu has the power to copy the skills of enemies, CHA so he thought and decided to warn her master about it. Suddenly, Jin Heen appeared in CHA so he's path and blocked her way. She understood what was going on and why the girl was blocking her way. Jin Hyun tried to tell me that CHA so he was not doing well. The master ordered to get rid of her because there was no reason to keep a hunting dog that couldn't do its job alive. When Shin Kang Hu woke up, he realized that he was in the hospital. When he saw Han So and sleeping by his bedside, he decided to quietly escape. As soon as Shin Sang Hu left the room, he was greeted by Li Yerin. The girl was sure that the guy would run away, because that was his style. Li Yerin decided to still ask Shin Kang Hu where he was going since his wounds had yet to heal. Shin Tsang Hu asked Li Yirin if Blue Eyes would be okay, because Eclipse would surely hunt them down. Li Yirin asked Shin Kan Hu not to worry about it. Eclipse was certainly not a small minded person, but Blue Eyes wasn't a small minded person either. Shin Tsang Hu thanked Li Yirin for everything and asked her to pass on her thanks to Han Soan. Li Yirin explained to Shin Kan that it was better to do it herself, because the girl thought that Han Soan would be much happier to hear those words personally from the guy. Han Soen was an important person to Shin Kang Hu, and if they get close, the event of the affair will happen again. Li Yirin didn't interfere with Shin Kang Hu's departure, but asked him to give her some time. After all, she had something she wanted to tell him. The body that Shin Kang Hu had asked her to retrieve had been pulled out, but it was not an easy task to establish the identity from the hunter's license alone. Li Yirin warned the guy that this case would take a little longer, because that guy might have been working under an alias. Even though the guys almost destroyed CHO Sohi, Eclipse did nothing. They took out a bunch of their people, but they haven't heard a peep from them. They had allocated a weighty number of their agents to catch Shin Sung Hu, but even one of their most valuable employees couldn't eliminate Song Yu. As for CHA Sohi, she failed in her assignment and was probably eliminated, because Kang Dong Hyun doesn't forgive such things. The test of a constellation is appointed solely by the will of the person. The tests themselves are different, depending on the nature of the constellation, but they all have one aspect in common. No matter how high a person's level is, he will have a hard time. So much so that some constellations schedule their trials just to get rid of their employers. But CHA Sohi had made it clear to Shin Tsang Hu that he needed to become stronger again, and there was no time to hesitate. A lot of people gathered to watch the guy fight, and Shin Kan Hu's opponent was a creature from another dimension. Shin Kan Hu was sure that there was no better place to fight, as it was much cleaner and more intense than the real world. Shin Kan Hu, who was at level 47, challenged Chang Shiwen, who had level 800, to a fight. Chang Sha Wan believed that Shin Kan Hu had chosen him, wanting to impress the constellation. Except that the only thing the guy would achieve was his death. Just as Shin Kan Hu had anticipated, Chang Sha Wan wouldn't miss the chance to show off in front of the constellation. Normally, high level constellations want to be mainstream, so seeing such a number, they wouldn't brush off such candidates. But now that there were so many of them, at least one might fall for Chang Sha Huan's tricks. Shin Kan Hu realized that Chang Shiwen was applying one skill after another, just like in the novel, and on his own, the guy would have a hard time. Shin Kan Hu had encountered all the skills before, but Chang Shiwen's power was simply unbelievable. Shin Kan Hu understood that if Chang Sha Wan immediately decided to use black magic, it only meant one thing, he had chosen the Dark Truth Seeker as his main constellation. While Chang Sha Wan was babbling about Shin Kan Hu being insignificant, the latter was able to get closer to him and reflect his skill. Chang Sha Wan was surprised that Shin Sung Hu had repelled his punch. Apparently, he had underestimated the guy. 